All right, my friends, welcome back to The Build Show. We're in the basement of a new home under construction my company's building, and we're about to show you one of the most beautiful mechanical rooms you've ever seen. We're gonna be reviewing this beautiful unit right here. This is the Renai REHP series. When you think of the name Renai, you think of really high quality. This is a Japanese brand that's been in the tankless gas water heater industry for a long, long time. But I gotta tell you, this brand new unit that they just unveiled at the International Builder Show has a lot of really cool features and some really high efficiency. So in the build show today, we're gonna review all the parts and pieces, all the nerdy data about why you might consider this for your next water heater, either a new construction, remodel, or replacement. And I'm gonna show you a couple features of this install, which I gotta say, this has gotta be one of the most beautiful installs I've ever seen. Today's build show is sponsored by Renai. Let's get going. Let's review a couple specs about this. This is the Renai Electric heat pump water heater. There have been other manufacturers that have made heat pump water heaters for a while, but Renai, when they came to the market with this, they put a couple of really cool things in that I wanna mention. First off, this happens to be their biggest model. They make an 80 gallon, a 65, and a 50 gallon. And I'm an absolute nerd for spec sheets. I love checking out product specs. And if you look at the product specs, first off, let's look at the uniform energy factor. They range from 3.75 all the way up to 4.0 on the biggest unit. I wanna break that down. UEF, uniform energy factor, means how efficient is this unit at turning a dollar's worth of electricity into hot water? Now, if this was a electric tank, you know, resistance heat, the UEFs on those are roughly 1.0. So this particular model, which is their highest rated one as a 4.0, this is actually four times more efficient than a standard electric tank. So instead of resistance heat, this is using the technology of a heat pump, which is in this upper unit right here. You and I have used those for years with our refrigerator and our kitchen. This is not new technology, but these guys are using that heat pump to take the heat out of the air and put it into the tank. And it's four times more efficient. So efficient even that this unit at $174 of annual electricity cost is the absolute lowest on the scale. <laughs> How cool is that? That is basically 25% of the electric cost of a similar size tank that would be a standard resistance tank. And if you look at the spec sheet, this tells the story right here. This unit does also have a backup element in it, meaning a standard electric resistance element. Uh, think about like that, that heat strip in a hairdryer. If you've, if you've blow dried your hair, you know that coil that gets real hot? All electric tanks have one of those. And this also has that element if it needs it as a backup, if we're, if we're turning this into a kind of high output mode where it's gonna use the heat pump and that. And that particular element is 4,500 watts. Now this unit is connect, all these units are connected to a 30 amp 220 circuit. So it kind of installs in terms of electrical, just like a standard electric unit. But here's where the secret sauce is. Check this out, compressor wattage, 500 watts. So the heat pump that's up here in this upper section, the compressor that's in there is only running at 500 watts, which means that if we just use that compressor to heat the water and we let that element just hang, hang out and not do anything in the water, we're gonna heat all our water with simply 500 watts of electricity compared to 4,500 watts if we're going into you know, a high use mode. So my recommendation first off would be set this on the lowest setting right away. There's gonna be, I don't know what it's called because I don't have the electric hooked up here. It's probably gonna be eco mode or most efficient mode. All the heat pumps I've put in over the years, I always tell my clients, hey, put that in eco mode first. That way it's gonna run only on the heat pump and make sure that you've got plenty of hot water for your family. And if you do, you never have to put it into any one of those other modes. Now, if you knew you were gonna have company at Christmas time and a house full of uh, people and kids, there's gonna be other modes that will use both the resistance and the heat pump to, to give you a higher first hour rating. But if heat pump only mode can do it, 
you're good to go. It's one of the reasons why I typically like to, as long as we've got a few people in the house, spec these 80 gallon models because I've got 80 gallons of standing hot water. And also we can change the temperature on this. Typically we're gonna set our water heaters around 120, but if we need to get more uh, heat in the tank, basically, we could set that tank at 125, 130, sometimes even hotter. Now, a couple other specs that I think are really interesting on here. Look at the first hour ratings on here. The smallest tank, 50 gallon tank, first hour rating 73 gallons. This tank, 80 gallon tank, it's gonna give us 91 gallons of first hour rating. Now, one thing that's interesting to think about this though, the recovery, if you look at this right here, it says recovery in gallons per hour at 90 degree rise. All these models recover 27.5, but that's at a 90 degree rise. Where I am in Austin, Texas, most of the time, my inlet temperatures into the tank from the street to here are something like 55 degrees which means I don't have very far to go from 55 to 120. I certainly don't have 90. So the performance I'm gonna get out of this tank here in Texas is probably gonna actually beat these specs compared to somebody in Minnesota who we might have in the wintertime an inlet temperature of uh, you know 35 or 40 degrees, something like that. I've got much warmer water coming into the tank. Uh, one thing that really separates this unit from the others in the marketplace though, is that I can get a duct kit for this. Meaning if this is in a small closet, let's say if I had a door right here, we would not wanna enclose this into a small closet by itself because remember it's grabbing the heat out of the air and then dumping that heat into the tank. And if it's stuffed in there without a lot of airflow, it's not gonna operate very efficiently at all. In fact, it, it may have troubles keeping up because it can't grab that heat out of the air. And the output from this thing is both cold and dehumidified air. It's why you need to, whether you're doing new construction or remodel, you need to think about a condensate drain for this. My plumbers did an absolutely beautiful job on this. This has to be one of the prettiest installs I've ever seen. So this unit, when it runs, is gonna make cold and dehumidified air. Now your refrigerator, when it makes a little bit of condensate, it gets burned off in the bottom. But this unit, we need to make sure we've got a spot for that condensate. And that's what this pipe back here is. My plumbers left this off for me so I could show you. But this little outlet on the back of the unit is the condensate drain. And they include a condensate flexible drain for that that pops on. And this will get piped by my plumbers tomorrow when they come back into this drain right here. The copper pipe you're seeing here is the T&P release. This is like any other tank. If there's a problem with the unit and it heats up and heats up, you wanna make sure the tank doesn't explode. So this is a pressure relief valve that we're piping into this floor drain right here. And then also check out this absolutely gorgeous pan that we had made uh, locally. We got this done at Capital uh, Sheet Metal here in Austin, Texas. Stainless pan. It's plumbed into this drain as well. So if there was a problem with this thing in 30 years, it would leak into this pan. I also want to mention, by the way, that uh, we put this into like a recess in this mechanical room and we use this special type of plywood. This looks like MDO plywood, but in fact, it's actually just a standard three quarter plywood that has kind of like a melamine surface on it, but it's not actually melamine. I don't know the exact uh, model number for this, and then we caulked the corners so that if there was some explosion from uh, you know, a water line someday, it would almost act like a shower pan. And then lastly, this area where we're located here inside the mechanical room, we have a, a bump between this floor and the floor uh, next door. So we're not perfectly flush and we're draining right down into this floor drain, which is right in front of me here. So one thing to remember, whether you're doing new construction or remodel, if you're replacing out an existing electric tank with one of these, or even a gas for that matter, they may not have had to condensate. They usually don't have a condensate drain. So you need to figure out where you're gonna drain this to, that where that condensate's basically gonna go to. Okay, next, let's go back to the piping though. I actually wanna show you the parts. They sent me to them. Uh, the Renai folks sent these to me so I could show you. What you're looking at here is a two piece set. Now this guy goes on the side of the unit. You can see it's kind of pre-shaped. So we'd actually pop a couple screws in there. And then this is the uh, outlet, the exhaust. The exhaust from this side, as I mentioned earlier, is gonna be cold air that has been dehumidified. It's gonna have less moisture in the air. 
the top piece right here, which would go over top of this uh, filter, would be the supply air. So if we were in a house that had an existing water heater closet, we could use that and pipe out of, let's say a next door hallway, a laundry room, a garage, wherever. In general though, you wanna put these typically in something like at least a 10 by 10 by 10 room. And that's, this mechanical room is actually a little bigger than that. I also have a bunch of other equipment in here. So this will be generally a slightly hotter room which is perfect for this because again, the output is gonna be cold air. So this will help temper that area. If you're in the South, garages are a typical place, a terrific place to put these. If you're in the North, basements are a great place to put these. They will give you a little bit of a dehumidifier benefit. They're gonna dump some cold air, but I've read some studies that show it's not hardly enough cold air to make any difference in terms of chilling your basement. So don't worry about that if you're in the North, if you've got a basement situation like I've got here. Okay, a couple other stats I wanna mention on this. 10 year warranty on the tank and the parts, one year warranty on the labor. And then remember, because this thing is so efficient, you wanna check out the possibilities for rebates. This can be a really big deal. Where I am down here in Austin, Texas, there's some excellent rebates from my local utility. I'll put a link to a website below in the description. They have some information on the Renai website. There's a bunch of places you can go, but definitely search out the rebate options. A lot of local utilities have great rebates for these heat pump water heaters. This Renai is probably the most efficient unit that I've seen in the marketplace. Another stat on here that's a really small one that they don't, they don't highlight, but I think we should highlight, is that this heat pump operation is down to 37 degrees, meaning if this was in your garage, even if it was 37 degrees out, as cold as 37, this would still be able to grab heat out of that temperature in your garage and dump it into the tank before it would need to go into uh, operation mode for resistance, basically using that resistance heater. So that's a nice feature on this that I haven't seen in a lot of other ones. This one also has demand response enabled software on it, which means that you could connect this to your local utility and during peak demand times, we could turn down, especially if it was in resistance mode, turn it on to heat pump only mode and that can help your local utilities. And oftentimes there's a rebate that goes along with that. I do wanna mention that there's uh, zero clearance required on the back, top and side of the units for confined spaces. It also has a horizontal air filter right on the top here for quick maintenance. And it has some really nice handles on the side, which are unusual uh, for moving these things around. By the way, these do not uh, feel light to me. Uh, you wanna get some help when you use these. The smallest model weighs 218 pounds. This particular unit weighs 290 pounds. So make sure you've got two people to wrestle this into place. Guys, I gotta tell you, this is one beautiful install. Between the epoxy floor we put down in the mechanical room, these floor drains, the way the plumbers piped it all, and this really pretty copper, the white on the unit itself and the white in the walls, man, this is a pretty install. Guys, big thanks to Renai for sponsoring today's video. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.